Uh, my name is Steven Varela and I teach with the University of Texas at El Paso uh, with the English department there. And my presentation today is to really kind of talk about the animosity and antagonism academia has with graphic novels and comics. How we've kind of kept it out of the literature circles and in some cases directly out of our literature classes. Because we tend to devalue it. We don't necessarily see it as uh, enlightening intellectually or anything else like that. Um, and so today's presentation is to basically say, what a, what a load, <laughs> right? <laughs> but this is not, uh, this is not, uh, this is very much a false perception uh, in terms of things. And so my, my presentation for you here is the idea of recanonization. I'd like to start off with just a basic question first because I, I, I'm a teacher so I can't help but ask questions and hope for a response here. Would you, if you, I want to throw you back to high school for a second. I'm sorry, I know, right? <laughs> but go back to high school for a second or even some of those early literature classes that you had in college. Who did you read? Beowulf, sorry, yeah, I know, <laughs> right? <laughs> what else? Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald, Great Gatsby, always, absolutely. Who else? Miller. Arthur Miller, absolutely. Who Faulkner. else? Faulkner, William Faulkner. Who else? Sinclair. Upton Sinclair, The Jungle, uh -huh. right? Who else? Shelley. Shelley, Mary Shelley Frankenstein, absolutely. Joseph Conrad, Joseph Conrad Heart of Darkness. Don't now, Steinbeck. Steinbeck, right? Of Mice and Men, or if you had a good teacher, Grapes of Wrath. <laughs> <laughs> right? So why are these so common with all of us? Why was it so easy for us to go, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah? It's considered like literature, like to put in that category. Definitely. This is what we, what we call the English canon, essentially, the great books that everyone reads. Um, and unfortunately, in many ways, it just hasn't changed. We're definitely kind of in the midst of what we kind of call a cultural war. Right? Um, from a philosophical, theoretical perspective, it's really kind of the antagonism between what we call modernism and postmodernism. Modernism is really kind of an absolute value system. It's where, in terms of having social cohesion and conformity, we kind of say everyone needs a, a set of social standards, a certain set of social values that need to be adhered to 100%. Right? In order for us to have a value system, it has to be adhered to 100%. Let me explain for a second here. Um, how many of you could, would call yourself an honest person? <laughs> All right. Well, let me ask you a follow-up question then. Do you tell lies? <laughs> <laughs> Well, the problem then with it is that we go, well, if you find an excuse to kind of tell a lie, well, then how can you call yourself an honest person, right? An honest person would be someone who does it 100% of the time, right? And this is what modernists would say is that if you can justify or find a reason for maybe telling a little white lie here and there, um, you know, do I look nice tonight? You're like, absolutely, right? These kinds of things. Um, <laughs> ultimately, what you've done is diminish the value system then. Right? Because if you can find that one instance to find an excuse to not tell a lie, well then you're going to be able to find a whole bunch of them. So what modernists kind of say is these, need, these ideals and ethical values have to be adhered to 100% of the time. These are standards by which people need to live by. Because they'll basically give credence to a value system in, in many ways. Now if we apply that kind of modernist point of view to something like literature, well we have very strict standards then of what literature needs to be. Right? Um, and one of the biggest standards is can it have pictures? No, <laughs> right? When we, when we have this perception of literature, we expect it to be 500 words, right? I mean, 500 pages, I should say. Little tiny print, hardcover book, and for authenticity, some dust on the cover and stuff like that, too, <laughs> right? <laughs> All those things need to be in place, and then we go, yeah, yeah, that's literature, right? Um, it's got to feel like literature. It's got to look like literature. Um, and again, if it has those pictures in there, we kind of go, hmm, not really, right? And this is uh, what happens with academia. This is what happens in literature classes. We establish a certain level of exclusivity with it and say literature has to look, read, um, and even you know, change you in a certain way to be considered literature. And once that becomes institutional, once that becomes part of the canon, it becomes very difficult for us to add new stuff in. Um, and it becomes kind of stagnant in many ways too, right? And this is, as we mentioned a few minutes ago, why we keep reading the same thing over and over and over and over again, right? The other aspect though um, that we really kind of find ourselves in now is really kind of a postmodern culture, right? Um, this is, for better or worse, we've moved for, to some extent to, to, from absolute values into more of a relative value system. We look for individual context and circumstance to make our value judgments and stuff, right? Um, value systems are subjective. Um, basically, postmodernism kind of holds that. Uh, 
community standards are really kind of impossible to, to adhere for everyone. They're too rigid. Uh, because what's good for me may not be good for you. What's moral for me may not be moral for you. Um, now, if we apply this to literature, this kind of basically holds the premise that what's literature to me may not be literature to you, right? Um, it kind of opens up the spectrum of what literature can be in many ways, right? Um, and popular culture itself, being accessible as it is, um, this gives us a great, a great deal of wiggle room in terms of what is considered literature now. Right? Um, and again, it's kind of for better or for worse. Both modernism and postmodernism has its pros and cons. Modernisms can be, modernism can be very, very strict and dogmatic and um, exclusive, but postmodernism also can go so far that we kind of go, well, I wrote this little note on my notebook here. There you go. That's literature, right? <laughs> you always run the risk of that as well. Um, one of the main books that I use currently right now in my university classes is something you all might be very familiar with, which is Art Spiegelman's Mouse Books, right? This is uh, his graphic novel, essentially of his father's time during the Jewish genocide, World War II, right? Um, it's amazing how, in terms of the, the success of the book, the kinds of criticism that it also received as well. Um, in terms of the accolades, first of all, it won the Pulitzer Prize for Literature, right? And that just completely opened up this genre to academia, because we kind of go, OK, <laughs> right? Um, he broke down a bunch of doors when, he, when this, because we saw people started seeing the literary value of, of this kind of genre, right? Um, but even Spiegelman himself received criticism from within his own culture. Um, some Jewish survivors said, no, what you've done here now is made our experience um, less than serious, right? You've denigrated it by, put it into a, by putting it into a cartoon perspective. Right? Here's the thing, though. It its literary value obviously was very much recognized in terms of winning that Pulitzer Prize, but it's also very much recognized within the classrooms as well. Students absolutely love this book. Um, when they have to compare, they go, man, I read The Diary of Anne Frank. I read uh, Eli Weisel's Night. Um, those were good books, but this, wow. This is just a totally different perspective um, and a totally different way of looking at this event. Right? <laughs> Needless to say, um, even to some extent, literature academics would say this doesn't belong in a college classroom. And the main reason would be what, folks? What do you think? Pictures. The pictures, absolutely. That there are better, there's better literature out there to teach this than something like uh, Spiegelman's Mouse. 